Uh, so this goes to the definition of velocity and acceleration in motion. So um, since this is a calculus-based class, uh, we can do this, which, um, it, so this is one of the things that I love about teaching calculus-based physics class, which is that um, we can, we can talk about the way physical things are, the, the way it is, without having to um, use a circumlocution, without having to talk around what the things really are. So, uh, so for example, so these are the definitions of velocity and acceleration. If you have a position as a function of time, then velocity is defined as the time derivative of position and acceleration is defined as time derivative of velocity. And in an earlier physics class, that's not calculus-based physics class, um, we might talk about like average velocity or um, we might talk about how velocity is a change of position over change of time. And, um, and then, you know, in the class we would basically describe what is the limit process, delta t going to zero. You know, you can measure average velocity that way, but as you take a smaller, smaller interval, um, that's the sort of thing that, uh, without using the word limit, that's the sort of the thing that we might have to talk about in an algebra-based physics class. Now, in this class, everyone has taken calculus, so we can just uh, describe it this way. And I hope this makes a mathematical sense. Um, I, I would love to explain any um, places where it's not clear, so. Okay, so in this question, we are given the position as a function of time. And the question isn't really careful about units, so we'll just say that these coefficients are whatever, they come in whatever units necessary, so that after being, or how do I, oh, uh, I think if I say it this way, I'll be, Correct. Um, we'll say t is just a number. It doesn't have a unit of its own, but it's num amount of time in seconds. Since the question is already asking about uh, time in seconds, so we'll assume that it, in this equation, time is assumed to be given in seconds. So with that st stipulation, we have position as a function of time. So what we need for velocity and speed, and I guess not quite acceleration. What we need for velocity is this. Velocity is the time derivative position. So let me take the derivative. It's a polynomial, so I'm gonna do it mostly in my head. Um, so the derivative of the first term, it's gonna be just this, with respect to t. It's just gonna be seven because derivative of t with respect to t is one. So seven minus, and then seven times the derivative of t squared is gonna be two times t. That's the polynomial derivative rule that I hope everyone remembers. So two times the seven is 14 t. And this will magically be a unit of meters per second. So for the first question, really all we have to do is plug in three here. So uh, let's say 42, so out uh, to be, I don't know. Uh, minus 35, um, okay. And when it's asking, oh, my things are gonna be misaligned. <laughs> when it's asking instantaneous speed, um, it, it's a, that's getting at the definition of a speed. And so one of those uh, things that, uh, weird things that us physicists to do, speed and velocity in everyday English, they are synonyms. In physics, they are not. Speed means um, it's the absolute value of velocity. It's the magnitude of velocity without regard to, to uh, sign. So it's just gonna be 35. Okay, um, it asks what is the average velocity between t equals two second and t equals three second. Okay, um, here I think the easiest thing to do is, uh, we the textbook will actually give you a definition of average velocity. And um, and I guess uh, if uh, we, do I, let me not make it complicated. So textbook gives you a definition. The definition is, is equal to, 
is a change of position over a duration of time. This is the language that we use in uh, non-calculus-based physics class. Uh, so, um, so I guess the reason I feel like I need to highlight this specifically is uh, there are some derivational formulas that use this definition that actually comes in very handy. So this has uses beyond um, being used as something that you take a limit of to get instantaneous velocity. So, um, so, so let me leave that there. And I think you can see in specific derivations um, where it's useful. And I think I also talk about that in some of the lectures. So, so with this definition in mind, really all we have to do is, okay, how much does the position change from two to three seconds? I need to get position at t equals three seconds, subtract the position at t equals two seconds, and divide it by, uh, well, three second minus one second, or working through, uh, <laughs> okay, I don't want to do that in my head. So let me just to bring up a calculator and do it this part on calculator. So I need um, seven times three minus uh, seven times three squared minus, let me open a parenthesis. Um, seven times two minus seven times two squared. Close parenthesis, say equal. Okay, minus 28 meters. Okay, that I guess makes sense. Um, so minus 28 meters divided by, oh, that should have been two. Um, one second, so average velocity, it should be minus 28 meters per second. And it's reasonably close to the instantaneous velocity, so it's probably right. minus 28. 